Don't just read NCERT. Listen it and feel it. Textbook of Chemistry, Class Eleventh, Chapter Seven, Equilibrium, narrated by Barker Riaz. Chemical equilibria are important in numerous biological and environmental processes. For example, equilibria involving O2 molecules and the protein hemoglobin play a crucial role in the transport and delivery of O2 from our lungs to our muscles. Similarly, equilibria involving CO molecules and hemoglobin account for the toxicity of CO. When a liquid evaporates in a closed container, molecules with relatively higher kinetic energy escape the liquid surface into the vapor phase. A number of liquid molecules from the vapor phase strike the liquid surface and are retained in the liquid phase. It gives rise to a constant vapor pressure because of an equilibrium in which the number of molecules leaving the liquid equals the number returning to liquid from the vapor. We say that the system has reached equilibrium state at this stage. However, this is not static equilibrium and there is a lot of activity at the boundary between the liquid and the vapor. Thus, at the equilibrium, the rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation. It may be represented by double arrow H2O liquid, double arrow H2O vapor. The double half arrows indicate that the processes in both the directions are going on simultaneously. The mixture of reactants and products in the equilibrium state is called an equilibrium mixture. Equilibrium can be established for both physical processes and chemical reactions. The reaction may be fast or slow depending on the experimental conditions and the nature of the reactants. When the reactants in a closed vessel at a particular temperature react to give products, the concentrations of the reactants keep on decreasing, while those of the products keep on increasing for some time after which there is no change in the concentration of either of the reactants or products. This stage of the system is the dynamic equilibrium and the rates of the forward and reverse reaction become equal. It is due to this dynamic equilibrium stage that there is no change in the concentrations of various species in the reaction mixture, based on the extent to which the reactions proceed to reach the state of chemical equilibrium. These may be classified in three groups. First, the reactions that proceed nearly to completion and only negligible concentrations of the reactants are left. In some cases, it may not be even possible to detect these experimentally. Second, the reactions in which only small amounts of products are formed and most of the reactants remain unchanged at equilibrium stage. Third, the reactions in which the concentrations of the reactants and products are comparable when the system is in equilibrium. The extent of a reaction in equilibrium varies with the experimental conditions such as concentrations of reactants, temperature, etc. Optimization of the operational conditions is very important in industry and laboratory so that equilibrium is favorable in the direction of the desired product. Some important aspects of equilibrium involving physical and chemical processes are dealt in this unit along with the equilibrium involving ions in aqueous solutions which is called as ionic equilibrium. Topic 7.1 Equilibrium in Physical Processes The characteristics of system at equilibrium the characteristics of a system at equilibrium are better understood if we examine some physical processes. The most familiar examples are phase transformation processes. Example: Solid to liquid, liquid to gas and solid to gas. Subtopic 7.1.1 Solid liquid equilibrium Ice and water kept in a perfectly insulated thermos flask, there is no exchange of heat between its contents and the surroundings at 273 Kelvin and the atmospheric pressure are in equilibrium state and the system shows interesting characteristic features. We observe that the mass of ice and water do not change with time and the temperature remains constant. However, the equilibrium is not static. The intense activity can be noticed at the boundary between ice and water. Molecules from the liquid water collide against ice and adhere to it and some molecules of ice escape into liquid phase. There is no change of mass of ice and water, as the rates of transfer of molecules from ice into water and of reverse transfer from water into ice are equal at atmospheric pressure and 273 Kelvin. It is obvious that 
ice and water are in equilibrium only at particular temperature and pressure. For any pure substance at atmospheric pressure, the temperature at which the solid and liquid phases are at equilibrium is called the normal melting point or normal freezing point of the substance. The system here is in dynamic equilibrium and we can infer the following. First, both the opposing processes occur simultaneously. Second, both the processes occur at the same rate so that the amount of ice and water remains constant. Subtopic 7.1.2 Liquid Vapor Equilibrium This equilibrium can be better understood if we consider the example of a transparent box carrying a U-tube with mercury that is manometer, drying agent like anhydrous calcium chloride or phosphorus pentoxide is placed for a few hours in the box. After removing the drying agent, by tilting the box on one side, a watch glass or petri dish containing water is quickly placed inside the box. It will be observed that the mercury level in the right limb of the manometer slowly increases and finally attains a constant value. There is a pressure inside the box increases and reaches a constant value. Also, the volume of water in the watch glass decreases. Figure 7.1 Initially, there was no water vapor or very less inside the box. As water evaporated, the pressure in the box increased due to addition of water molecules into the gaseous phase inside the box. The rate of evaporation is constant. However, the rate of increase in pressure decreases with time due to condensation of vapor into water. Finally, it leads to an equilibrium condition when there is no net evaporation. This implies that the number of water molecules from the gaseous state into the liquid state also increases till the equilibrium is attained. That is, rate of evaporation is equals to rate of condensation. H2O liquid gives H2O vapors. At equilibrium, the pressure exerted by the water molecules at a given temperature remains constant and is called the equilibrium vapor pressure of water or just vapor pressure of water. Vapor pressure of water increases with temperature. If the above experiment is repeated with methyl alcohol, acetone and ether, it is observed that different liquids have different equilibrium vapor pressures at the same temperature and the liquid which has a higher vapor pressure is more volatile and has a lower boiling point. If we expose three watch glasses containing separately 1 ml each of acetone, ethyl alcohol and water to atmosphere and repeat the experiment with different volumes of the liquids in a warmer room, it is observed that in all such cases, the liquid eventually disappears and the time taken for complete evaporation depends on first, the nature of the liquid, second, the amount of the liquid and third, temperature. When the watch glass is open to the atmosphere, the rate of evaporation remains constant but the molecules are dispersed into large volume of the room. As a consequence, the rate of condensation from vapor to liquid state is much less than the rate of evaporation. These are open systems and it is not possible to reach equilibrium in an open system. Water and water vapor are in equilibrium position at atmospheric pressure that is 1.013 bar and at 100 degrees Celsius in a closed vessel. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius at 1.013 bar pressure. For any pure liquid at one atmospheric pressure, the temperature at which the liquid and vapors are at equilibrium is called normal boiling point of the liquid. Boiling point of the liquid depends on the atmospheric pressure. It depends on the altitude of the place. At high altitude, the boiling point decreases. Subtopic 7.1.3 Solid Vapor Equilibrium Let us now consider the systems where solid sublim to vapor phase if we place solid iodine in a closed vessel, after some time, the vessel gets filled up with violet vapor and the intensity of color increases with time. After certain time, the intensity of color becomes constant and at this stage, equilibrium is attained. Hence, solid iodine sublims to give iodine vapor and the iodine vapor condenses to give solid iodine. The equilibrium can be represented as I2 solid double arrow I2 vapor. Other examples showing this kind of equilibrium are camphor solid double arrow camphor vapor and NH4Cl solid double arrow NH4Cl vapor. Subtopic 7.1.4 Equilibrium involving dissolution of solids or gases in liquids. First, solids in liquids. We know from our experience that we can dissolve only a limited amount of salt or sugar in a given amount of water at room temperature. 
if we make a thick sugar syrup solution by dissolving sugar at higher temperature, sugar crystals separate out if we cool the syrup to the room temperature. We call it a saturated solution when no more of solute can be dissolved in it at a given temperature. The concentration of the solute in a saturated solution depends upon the temperature. In a saturated solution, a dynamic equilibrium exists between the solute molecules in the solid state and in the solution. And the rate of dissolution of sugar is equal to rate of crystallization of sugar. Equality of the two rates and dynamic nature of equilibrium has been confirmed with the help of radioactive sugar. If we drop some radioactive sugar into saturated solution of non-radioactive sugar, then after some time, radioactivity is absorbed both in the solution and in the solid sugar. Initially, there were no radioactive sugar molecules in the solution, but due to dynamic nature of equilibrium, there is exchange between the radioactive and non-radioactive sugar molecules between the two phases. The ratio of the radioactive to non-radioactive molecules in the solution increases till it attains a constant value. Second, gases in liquids. When a soda water bottle is opened, some of the carbon dioxide gas dissolved in it fizzes out rapidly. The phenomenon arises due to difference in solubility of carbon dioxide at different pressures. There is equilibrium between the molecules in the gaseous state and the molecules dissolved in the liquid state under pressure. That is, CO2 gas double arrow CO2 in solution. This equilibrium is governed by Henry's law which states that the mass of a gas dissolved in a given mass of a solvent at any temperature is proportional to the pressure of the gas above the solvent. This amount decreases with increase of temperature. The soda water bottle is sealed under pressure of gas when its solubility in water is high. As soon as the bottle is opened, some of the dissolved carbon dioxide gas escapes to reach a new equilibrium condition required for the lower pressure, namely its partial pressure in the atmosphere. This is how the soda water in bottle, when left open to the air for some time, turns flat. It can be generalized that, first, for solid liquid equilibrium, there is only one temperature, that is melting point at one atm, at which the two phases can coexist. If there is no exchange of heat with the surroundings, the mass of the two phases remain constant. Second, for liquid vapor equilibrium, the vapor pressure is constant at a given temperature. Third, for dissolution of solids in liquids, the solubility is constant at a given temperature. Fourth, for dissolution of gases in liquids, the concentration of a gas in liquid is proportional to the pressure, that is concentration of the gas over the liquid. These observations are summarized in Table 7.1. Subtopic 7.1.5 General Characteristics of Equilibria Involving Physical Processes For the physical processes discussed above, following characteristics are common to the system at equilibrium. First, equilibrium is possible only in a closed system at a given temperature. Second, both the opposing processes occur at the same rate and there is a dynamic but stable condition. Third, all measurable properties of the system remain constant. Fourth, when equilibrium is attained for a physical process, it is characterized by constant value of one of its parameters at a given temperature. Table 7.1 lists such quantities. Fifth, the magnitude of such quantities at any stage indicates the extent to which the physical process has proceeded before reaching equilibrium. Topic 7.2 Equilibrium in Chemical Processes that is dynamic equilibrium. Analogous to the physical systems, chemical reactions also attain a state of equilibrium. These reactions can occur both in forward and backward directions. When the rates of the forward and reverse reactions become equal, the concentration of the reactants and the products remain constant. This is the stage of chemical equilibrium. This equilibrium is dynamic in nature as it consists of a forward reaction in which the reactants give products and reverse reaction in which products give the original reactants. For a better comprehension, let us consider a general case of a reversible reaction A plus B gives C plus D. With passage of time, there is accumulation of the product C and D and depletion of the reactants A and B. This leads to a decrease in the rate of forward reaction and an increase in the rate of the reverse reaction. Eventually, the two reactions occur at the same rate and the system reaches a state of equilibrium. Similarly, the reaction can reach the state of equilibrium even if we start with only C and D, that is, no A and B being present initially. 
as the equilibrium can be reached from either direction. The dynamic nature of chemical equilibrium can be demonstrated in the synthesis of ammonia by Haber's process. In a series of experiments, Haber started with known amounts of dinitrogen and dihydrogen maintained at high temperature and pressure, and at regular intervals determined the amount of ammonia present. He was successful in determining also the concentration of unreacted dihydrogen and dinitrogen. Figure 7.4 shows that, after a certain time, the composition of the mixture remains the same even though some of the reactants are still present. This constancy in composition indicates that the reaction has reached equilibrium. In order to understand the dynamic nature of the reaction, synthesis of ammonia is carried out with exactly the same starting conditions of partial pressure and temperature but using D2 that is deuterium in place of H2. The reaction mixtures starting either with H2 or D2 reach equilibrium with the same composition except that D2 and ND3 are present instead of H2 and NH3. After equilibrium is attained, these two mixtures are mixed together and left for a while. Later, when this mixture is analyzed, it is found that the concentration of ammonia is just the same as before. However, when this mixture is analyzed by a mass spectrometer, it is found that ammonia and all deuterium containing forms of ammonia that is NH3, NH2D, NHG2 and ND3 and dihydrogen and its deuterated forms that is H2, HD and D2 are present. Thus, one can conclude that scrambling of H and D atoms in the molecules must result from a continuation of the forward and reverse reactions in the mixture. If the reaction had simply stopped when they reached equilibrium, then there would have been no mixing of isotopes in this way. Use of isotope in the formation of ammonia clearly indicates that chemical reactions reach a state of dynamic equilibrium in which the rates of forward and reverse reactions are equal and there is no net change in composition. Equilibrium can be attained from both sides whether we start reaction by taking H2 gas and N2 gas and get NH3 or by taking NH3 gas and decomposing it into N2 gas and H2 gas. Similarly, let us consider the reaction H2 gas plus I2 gas double arrow 2HI gas. If we start with equal initial concentration of H2 and I2, the reaction proceeds in the forward direction and the concentration of H2 and I2 decreases while that of HI increases until all of these become constant at equilibrium. We can also start with HI alone and make the reaction to proceed in the reverse direction. The concentration of HI will decrease and concentrations of H2 and I2 will increase until they all become constant when equilibrium is reached. If total number of H and I atoms are same in a given volume, the same equilibrium mixture is obtained whether we start it from pure reactants or pure product. Topic 7.3 Law of Chemical Equilibrium and Equilibrium Constant A mixture of reactants and products in the equilibrium state is called an equilibrium mixture. In this section, we shall address a number of important questions about the composition of equilibrium mixture. What is the relationship between the concentrations of reactants and products in an equilibrium mixture? How can we determine equilibrium concentrations from initial concentrations? What factors can be exploited to alter the composition of an equilibrium mixture? The last question in particular is important when choosing conditions for synthesis of industrial chemicals such as H2, NH3, CaO, etc. To answer these questions, let us consider a general reversible reaction. A plus B gives C plus D, where A and B are the reactants, C and D are the products in the balanced chemical equation. On the basis of experimental studies of many reversible reactions, the Norwegian chemist Kato Maximilian Guldberg and Peter Wage proposed in 1864 that the concentrations in an equilibrium mixture are related by the following equilibrium equation. Kc is equals to C into D upon A into B, where Kc is the equilibrium constant and the expression on the right hand side is called the equilibrium constant expression. The equilibrium equation is also known as the law of mass action because in the early days of chemistry, concentration was called active mass. In order to appreciate their work better, let us consider reaction between gaseous H2 and I2 carried out in a sealed vessel at 731 Kelvin.
six sets of experiments with varying initial conditions were performed starting with only gaseous H2 and I2 in a sealed reaction vessel in first four experiments and only HI in other two experiments. Experiment 1, 2, 3 and 4 were performed taking different concentrations of H2 or I2 and with time it was observed that intensity of the purple color remained constant and equilibrium was attained. Similarly, for experiments 5 and 6, the equilibrium was attained from the opposite direction. Data obtained from all six sets of experiments are given in Table 7.2. It is evident from the experiments 1, 2, 3 and 4 that number of moles of dihydrogen reacted is equal to number of moles of iodine reacted is equal to half into number of moles of HI formed. Also experiments 5 and 6 indicate that concentration of H2 gas at equilibrium is equal to concentration of I2 gas. Knowing the above facts, in order to establish a relationship between concentrations of the reactants and products, several combinations can be tried. Let us consider the simple expression HI upon H2 into I2. It can be seen from table 7.3 that if we put the equilibrium concentrations of the reactants and products, the above expression is far from constant. However, if we consider the expression HI gas square upon H2 gas into I2 gas, we find that this expression gives constant value in all the six cases. It can be seen that in this expression the power of the concentration for reactants and products are actually the stoichiometric coefficients in the equation for the chemical reaction. Thus, for the reaction H2 gas plus I2 gas double arrow 2HI gas following equation 7.1, the equilibrium constant Kc is written as Kc is equals to HI square upon H2 into I2. Generally, the subscript EQ used for equilibrium is omitted from the concentration terms. It is taken for granted that the concentrations in the expressions for Kc are equilibrium values. We therefore write Kc is equal to HI gas square upon H2 gas into I2 gas. The subscript C indicates that Kc is expressed in concentrations of mole per liter. At a given temperature, the product of concentrations of the reaction products raised to the respective stoichiometric coefficient in the balanced chemical equation divided by the product of concentrations of the reactants raised to their individual stoichiometric coefficients has a constant value. This is known as the equilibrium law or law of chemical equilibrium. The equilibrium constant for a general reaction AA plus BB gives CC plus DD is expressed as Kc is equals to capital C raised to power C capital D raised to power small d upon capital A raised to power small a and capital B raised to power small b, where A, B, C and D are the equilibrium concentration of the reactants and products. Equilibrium constant for the reaction 4NH3 gas plus 5O2 gas gives 4NO gas plus 6H2O gas is written as Kc is equals to NO raised to power 4 into H2O raised to power 6 upon NH3 raised to power 4 into O2 raised to power 5. Molar concentrations of different species is indicated by enclosing these in a square bracket and as mentioned above, it is implied that these are equilibrium concentrations. While writing expression for equilibrium constant, symbol for phases that is S, L, G are generally ignored. Let us write equilibrium constant for reaction H2 gas plus I2 gas double arrow 2HI gas as Kc is equals to HI whole square upon H2 into I2 is equals to X. The equilibrium constant for the reverse reaction 2HI gas double arrow H2 gas plus I2 gas at the same temperature is Kc dash is equals to H2 into I2 upon HI square is equals to 1 by X is equals to 1 by Kc. Thus, Kc dash is equals to 1 by Kc. Equilibrium constant for the reverse reaction is the inverse of the equilibrium constant for the reaction in the forward direction. If we change the stoichiometric coefficients in a chemical equation by multiplying throughout by a factor, then we must make sure that the expression for equilibrium constant also reflects that change. For example, if the reaction 7.5 is written as half H2 gas plus half I2 gas double arrow HI gas, the equilibrium constant for the above reaction is given by Kc double dash is equals to Kc raised to power 1 by 2. On multiplying the equation 7.5 by n, we get nH2 gas plus ni2 gas 
double arrow to an HI gas. Therefore, equilibrium constant for the reaction is equals to Kc raised to power n. These findings are summarized in table 7.4. It should be noted that because the equilibrium constants Kc and Kc dash have different numerical values, it is important to specify the form of the balanced chemical equation when quoting the value of an equilibrium constant. Topic 7.4 Homogeneous Equilibria In a homogeneous system, all the reactants and products are in the same phase. For example, in the gaseous reaction, N2 gas plus 3H2 gas gives 2NH3 gas, reactants and products are in the homogeneous phase. Similarly, for the reactions, CH3C00C2H5 aqueous plus H2O liquid gives CH3COOH aqueous plus C2H5 aqueous and Fe3 plus aqueous plus SCN minus aqueous gives FeSCN2 plus aqueous. All the reactants and products are in homogeneous solution phase. We shall now consider equilibrium constant for some homogeneous reactions. Subtopic 7.4.1 Equilibrium constant in gaseous systems. So far we have expressed equilibrium constant of the reactions in terms of molar concentration of the reactants and products and use symbol Kc for it. For reactions involving gases, however, it is usually more convenient to express the equilibrium constant in terms of partial pressure. The ideal gas equation is written as PV is equals to nRT and P is equals to n upon V into RT. Here P is the pressure in Pascal n is the number of moles of the gas, V is the volume in meter cube and T is the temperature in Kelvin. Therefore, N by V is the concentration expressed in mole per meter cube. If concentration C is in mole per liter or mole per decimeter cube and P is in bar, then P is equals to CRT. Here, we can also write P is equals to gas into RT. At constant temperature, the pressure of the gas is proportional to its concentration that is P is directly proportional to concentration of gas. For reaction in equilibrium, H2 gas plus I2 gas gives 2HI gas. We can write either Kc is equals to HI gas whole square upon H2 gas into I2 gas or Kc is equals to PHI square upon PH2 into PI2 and Kp is equals to HI gas whole square upon H2 gas into I2 gas is equals to Kc. In this example, Kp is equals to Kc that is both equilibrium constants are equal. However, this is not always the case. For example, in reaction N2 gas plus 3H2 gas gives 2NH3 gas, Kp is equals to PNH3 whole square upon PN2 into PH2 whole cube implies Kp is equals to Kc into RT raised to power minus 2. Similarly, for a general reaction, small a capital A plus a small b capital B double arrow small c capital C plus small d capital D Kp is equals to Kc into RT raised to power delta N where delta N is equals to number of moles of gaseous products minus number of moles of gaseous reactants in the balanced chemical equation. It is necessary that while calculating the value of Kp, pressure should be expressed in bar because the standard state for pressure is 1 bar. We know from unit 1 that 1 pascal is equals to 1 newton per meter square and 1 bar is equals to 10 raised to power 5 pascals. Topic 7.5 Heterogeneous Equilibria Equilibrium in a system having more than one phase is called heterogeneous equilibrium. The equilibrium between water vapor and liquid water in a closed container is an example of heterogeneous equilibrium. H2O liquid double arrow H2O gas. In this example, there is a gas phase and a liquid phase. In the same way, equilibrium between a solid and its saturated solution is a heterogeneous equilibrium. Heterogeneous equilibria often involve pure solids or liquids. We can simplify equilibrium expressions for the heterogeneous equilibria involving a pure liquid or a pure solid as the molar concentration of pure solid or liquid is constant, that is, independent of the amount present. In other words, if a substance X is involved, then concentration of X and concentration of X in liquid are constant, whatever the amount of X is taken. Contrary to this, concentration of X gas and concentration of X aqueous will vary as the amount of X in a given volume varies. Let us take thermal dissociation of calcium carbonate which is an interesting and important example of heterogeneous chemical equilibrium. Calcium carbonate solid on heating gives 
calcium oxide solid plus carbon dioxide gas. On the basis of the stoichiometric equation, we can write Kc is equals to calcium oxide into CO2 upon CoCO3. Since CoCO3 and CaO are both constant, therefore modified equilibrium constant for the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate will be Kc dash is equals to concentration of CO2 gas or Kp is equals to PCO2. This shows that at a particular temperature there is a constant concentration or pressure of CO2 in equilibrium with calcium oxide solid and calcium carbonate solid. Experimentally it has been found that at 1100 Kelvin the pressure of CO2 in equilibrium with calcium carbonate solid and CaO solid is 2 into 10 raised to power 5 pascals. Therefore, equilibrium constant at 1100 Kelvin for the above reaction is Kp is equals to PCO2 is equals to 2 into 10 raised to power 5 pascal upon 10 raised to power 5 pascal is equals to 2. Similarly, in the equilibrium, similarly in the equilibrium between nickel, carbon monoxide, and nickel carbonyl used in the purification of nickel, that is Ni solid plus 4 CO gas gives NiCO4 gas. The equilibrium constant is written as Kc is equals to concentration of NiCO4 upon concentration of CO raised to power 4. It must be remembered that for the existence of heterogeneous equilibrium, pure solids or liquids must also be present, however small the amount may be, at equilibrium, but their concentrations or partial pressures do not appear in the expression of the equilibrium constant in the reaction Ag2O solid plus 2HNO3 aqueous gives 2 AgNO3 aqueous plus H2O liquid. Kc is equals to AgNO3 whole square upon HNO3 whole square. Topic 7.6 Applications of Equilibrium Constants Before considering the applications of equilibrium constants, let us summarize the important features of equilibrium constants as follows. First, expression for equilibrium constant is applicable only when concentration of reactants and products have attained constant values at equilibrium state. Second, the value of equilibrium constant is independent of initial concentrations of the reactants and products. Third, equilibrium constant is temperature dependent, having one unique value for a particular reaction represented by a balanced equation at a given temperature. Fourth, the equilibrium constant for the reverse reaction is equal to the inverse of equilibrium constant for the forward reaction. Fifth, the equilibrium constant K for a reaction is related to the equilibrium constant of the corresponding reaction whose equation is obtained by multiplying or dividing the equation for the original reaction by a small integer. Let us consider applications of equilibrium constant to first predict the extent of a reaction on the basis of its magnitude, second predict the direction of the reaction, and third calculate equilibrium concentrations. Subtopic 7.6.1 Predicting the extent of a reaction the numerical value of the equilibrium constant for a reaction indicates the extent of the reaction, but it is important to note that an equilibrium constant does not give any information about the rate at which the equilibrium is reached. The magnitude of Kc or Kp is directly proportional to the concentration of products and inversely proportional to the concentrations of the reactants. This implies that a high value of K is suggestive of a high concentration of products and vice versa. We can make the following generalization concerning the composition of equilibrium mixtures. If Kc is greater than 10 raised to power 3, products predominate over reactants, that is, if Kc is very large, the reaction proceeds nearly to completion. Consider the following examples. A. The reaction of H2 with O2 at 500 Kelvin has a very large equilibrium constant. Kc is equal to 2.4 into 10 raised to power 47. B. H2 gas plus Cl2 gas gives 2 HCl gas at 300 Kelvin has Kc is equals to 4 into 10 raised to power 31. C. H2 gas plus Br2 gas gives 2 HBr gas at 300 Kelvin has Kc is equals to 5.4 into 10 raised to power 18. If Kc is less than 10 raised to power minus 3, reactants predominate over products. That is, if Kc is very small, the reaction proceeds rarely. Consider the following examples. A. The decomposition of H2O into H2 and O2 at 500 Kelvin has a very small equilibrium constant. Kc is equal to 4.1 into 10 raised to power minus 48. B. N2 gas plus O2 gas 
gives two NO gas at 298 Kelvin has Kc is equal to 4.8 into 10 raised to power minus 31. If Kc is in the range of 10 raised to power minus 3 to 10 raised to power 3, appreciable concentrations of both reactants and products are present. Consider the following examples. A. For reaction of H2 with I2 to give HI, Kc is equal to 57 at 700 Kelvin. B. Also, gas phase decomposition of N2O4 to NO2 is another reaction with the value of Kc is equal to 4.64 into 10 raised to power minus 3 at 25 degrees Celsius, which is neither too small nor too large. Hence, equilibrium mixtures contain appreciable concentrations of both N2O4 and NO2. Subtopic 7.6.2 Predicting the directions of the reaction The equilibrium constant helps in predicting the direction in which a given reaction will proceed at any stage. For this purpose, we calculate the reaction quotient Q, the reaction quotient Q, QC with molar concentrations and QP with partial pressures is defined in the same way as the equilibrium constant Kc, except the concentrations in QC are not necessarily equilibrium values. For a general reaction, small a capital A plus small b capital B, double arrow small c capital C plus small d capital D, QC is equals to capital C raised to power small c into capital D raised to power small d upon capital A raised to power small a into capital B raised to power small b. Then, if QC is greater than KC, the reaction will proceed in the direction of reactants, that is reverse reaction. If QC is less than KC, the reaction will proceed in the direction of the products, that is forward reaction. If QC is equal to KC, the reaction mixture is already at equilibrium. Consider the gaseous reaction of H2 with I2, H2 gas plus I2 gas, double arrow 2HI gas, Kc is equal to 57 at 700 Kelvin. Suppose we have molar concentrations H2 is equal to 0.1 molar, I2 is equal to 0.2 molar and HI is equal to 0.4 molar. Thus, the reaction question Qc at this stage of the reaction is given by Qc is equal to 0.4 square upon 0.1 into 0.2 is equals to 8. Now in this case, QC is equals to 8 does not equal KC is equals to 57. So the mixture of H2, I2 and HI is not at equilibrium. That is, more H2 and I2 will react to form more HI and their concentrations will decrease till QC is equals to KC. The reaction question QC is useful in predicting the directions of reaction by comparing the values of QC and KC. Thus, we can make the following generalization concerning the direction of reaction. If QC is less than KC, net reaction goes from left to right. If QC is greater than KC, net reaction goes from right to left. If QC is equals to KC, no net reaction occurs. Subtopic 7.6.3 Calculating Equilibrium Concentrations In case of a problem in which we know the initial concentrations but do not know any of the equilibrium concentrations, the following three steps shall be followed. Step 1. Write the balanced equation for the reaction. Step 2. Under the balanced equation, make a table that lists for each substance involved in the reaction. A. The initial concentration. B. The change in concentration on going to equilibrium. And C. The equilibrium concentration. In constructing the table, define X as concentration, that is mole per liter of one of the substances that reacts on going to equilibrium. Then use the stoichiometry of the reaction to determine the concentrations of the other substances in terms of X. Step 3. Substitute the equilibrium concentrations into the equilibrium equation for the reaction and solve for X. If you are to solve a quadratic equation, choose the mathematical solution that makes chemical sense. Step 4. Step 4. Calculate the equilibrium concentrations from the calculated values of X. Step 5. Check your results by substituting them into the equilibrium equation. Topic 7.7 .7, Relationship between equilibrium constant K, reaction quotient Q, and Gibbs energy G. The value of Kc for a reaction does not depend on the rate of the reaction. However, as you have studied in Unit 6, it is directly related to the thermodynamics of the reaction and in particular to the change in Gibbs energy that is delta G. If delta G is negative, then the reaction is spontaneous and proceeds in the forward direction. If delta G is positive, 
then the reaction is considered non-spontaneous. Instead, as reverse reaction would have a negative delta G, the products of the forward reaction shall be converted to the reactants. If delta G is zero, reaction has achieved equilibrium. At this point, there is no longer any free energy left to drive the reaction. A mathematical expression of this thermodynamic view of equilibrium can be described by the following equation. Delta G is equal to delta G naught plus RT ln Q, where G naught is the standard Gibbs energy. At equilibrium, when delta G is equal to zero and Q is equal to Kc, the equation 7.21 becomes delta G is equal to delta G naught plus RT ln K is equal to zero. Ln K is equal to minus delta G naught upon RT. Taking antilog of both sides, we get K is equal to e raised to power minus delta G naught upon RT. Hence, using the equation 7.23, the reaction spontaneity can be interpreted in terms of the value of delta G naught. If delta G naught is less than zero, then minus delta G naught upon RT is positive and e raised to power minus delta G naught upon RT is greater than one, making K is equal to one, which implies a spontaneous reaction or the reaction which proceeds in the forward direction to such an extent that the products are present predominantly. If delta G naught is greater than zero, then minus delta G naught upon RT is negative and e raised to power minus delta G naught upon RT is less than one, that is K is less than one, which implies a non-spontaneous reaction or a reaction which proceeds in the forward direction to such a small degree that only a very minute quantity of product is formed. Topic 7.8 Factors Affecting Equilibria One of the principal goals of chemical synthesis is to maximize the conversion of the reactants into products. While minimizing the expenditure of energy, this implies maximum yield of products at mild temperature and pressure conditions. If it does not happen, then the experimental conditions need to be adjusted. For example, in the Haber process for the synthesis of ammonia from N2 and H2, the choice of experimental conditions is of real economic importance. Annual world production of ammonia is about 100 million tons, primarily for use as fertilizers. Equilibrium constant Kc is independent of initial concentrations, but if a system at equilibrium is subjected to a change in the concentration of one or more of the reacting substances, then the system is no longer at equilibrium and net reaction takes place in some direction until the system returns to equilibrium once again. Similarly, a change in temperature or pressure of the system may also alter the equilibrium. In order to decide what course the reaction adopts and make a qualitative prediction about the effect of change in conditions on equilibrium, we use Lee Chatelier's principle. It states that a change in any of the factors that determine the equilibrium conditions of a system will cause the system to change in such a manner so as to reduce or to counteract the effect of the change. This is applicable to all physical and chemical equilibria. We shall now be discussing factors which can influence the equilibrium. Subtopic 7.8.1 Effect of Concentration Change In general, when equilibrium is disturbed by the addition or removal of any reactant or products, Lee Chatelier's principle predicts that, first, the concentration stress of an added reactant or product is relieved by net reaction in the direction that consumes the added substance. Second, the concentration stress of a removed reactant or product is relieved by net reaction in the direction that replenishes the removed substance, or in other words, when the concentration of any of the reactants or products in a reaction at equilibrium is changed, the composition of the equilibrium mixture changes so as to minimize the effect of concentration changes. Let us take the reaction H2 gas plus I2 gas gives 2 HI gas. If H2 is added to the reaction mixture at equilibrium, then the equilibrium of the reaction is disturbed. In order to restore it, the reaction proceeds in a direction wherein H2 is consumed, that is more of H2 and I2 react to form HI and finally the equilibrium shifts in right or forward direction. This is in accordance with the Lee Chatelier's principle, which implies that in case of addition of a reactant or product, a new equilibrium will be set up in which the concentration of the reactant or product should be less than what it was after the addition, but more than what it was in the original mixture. The same point can be explained in terms of the reaction quotient QC. 
QC is equals to HI whole square upon H2 into I2. Addition of hydrogen at equilibrium results in value of QC being less than KC. Thus, in order to attain equilibrium again, reaction moves in the forward direction. Similarly, we can say that removal of a product also boosts the forward reaction and increases the concentration of the products and this has great commercial application in cases of reactions, where the product is a gas or a volatile substance. In case of manufacture of ammonia, ammonia is liquefied and removed from the reaction mixture so that reaction keeps moving in forward direction. Similarly, in the large-scale production of CaO, fused as important building material from CaCO3, constant removal of CO2 from the kin drives the reaction to completion. It should be remembered that continuous removal of a product maintains QC at a value less than KC and reaction continues to move in the forward direction. Effect of concentration An experiment This can be demonstrated by the following reaction. Fe3 plus aqueous plus SCN minus aqueous gives FeSCN2 minus gives FeSCN2 plus. Kc is equals to concentration of FeSCN2 plus upon Fe3 plus aqueous into SCN minus aqueous. A reddish color appears on adding two drops of 0.02 molar potassium thiocyanate solution to 1 ml of 0.2 m iron 3 nitrate solution. Due to the formation of FeSCN2+, the intensity of the red color becomes constant on attaining equilibrium. This equilibrium can be shifted in either forward or reverse directions depending on our choice of adding a reactant or a product. The equilibrium can be shifted in the opposite direction by adding reagents that remove Fe3 plus or SCN- ions. For example, oxalic acid that is H2C2O4 reacts with Fe3 plus ions to form the stable complex ion FeC2O4 whole thrice 3 minus, thus decreasing the concentration of free Fe3 plus aqueous in accordance with the leach Atelier's principle. The concentration stress of removed Fe3 plus is relieved by dissociation of FeSCN2 plus to replenish the Fe3 plus ions. Because the concentration of FeSCN2 plus decreases, the intensity of red color decreases. Addition of aqueous HgCl2 also decreases red color because Hg2 plus reacts with Sn minus ions to form stable complex ion HgSCN4 whole twice. To form stable complex ion HgSCN whole 4 2 minus, removal of free SCN minus aqueous shifts the equilibrium in equation 7.24 from right to left to replenish SCN minus ions. Addition of potassium thiocyanide on the other hand increases the color intensity of the solution as it shifts the equilibrium to right. Subtopic 7.8.2 Effect of Pressure Change A pressure change obtained by changing the volume can affect the yield of products in case of a gaseous reaction where the total number of moles of gaseous reactants and total number of moles of gaseous products are different. In applying leach Atelier's principle to a heterogeneous equilibrium, the effect of pressure changes on solids and liquids can be ignored because the volume and concentration of a solution or liquid is nearly independent of pressure. Consider the reaction. Cu plus 3H2 gives CH4 plus H2O. Here, 4 mole of gaseous reactants, that is Cu plus 3H2, become 2 mole of gaseous products, CH4 plus H2O. Suppose equilibrium mixture for above reaction kept in a cylinder fitted with piston at constant temperature is compressed to one half of its original volume, then total pressure will be doubled according to PV is equals to constant, the partial pressure and therefore concentration of reactants and products have changed and the mixture is no longer at equilibrium. The direction in which the reaction goes to re-establish equilibrium can be predicted by applying the leach Atelier's principle. Since pressure has doubled, the equilibrium now shifts in the forward direction a direction in which the number of moles of the gas or pressure decreases. We know pressure is proportional to moles of the gas. This can also be understood by using reaction quotient QC. Let CO, H2, CH4 and H2O be the molar concentrations at equilibrium for methanation reaction. When volume of the reaction mixture is halved, the partial pressure and the concentration are doubled. We obtain the reaction quotient by replacing each equilibrium concentration by double its value. QC is equals to CH4 gas into H2O gas upon CO gas into H2 whole cube. 
as QC is less than KC, the reaction proceeds in the forward direction. In reaction, carbon solid plus CO2 gas gives 2 CO gas. When pressure is increased, the reaction goes in the reverse direction because the number of moles of gas increases in the forward direction. Subtopic 7.8.3 Effect of Inert Gas Addition If the volume is kept constant and an inert gas such as argon is added, which does not take part in the reaction, the equilibrium remains undisturbed. It is because the addition of an inert gas at constant volume does not change the partial pressures or the molar concentrations of the substance involved in the reaction. The reaction quotient changes only if the added gas is a reactant or product involved in the reaction. Subtropic 7.8.4 Effect of Temperature Change Whenever an equilibrium is disturbed by change in the concentration, pressure or volume, decomposition of the equilibrium mixture changes because the reaction quotient QC no longer equals the equilibrium constant KC. However, when a change in temperature occurs, the value of equilibrium constant KC is changed. In general, the temperature dependence of the equilibrium constant depends on the sign of delta H for the reaction. The equilibrium constant for an exothermic reaction, that is negative delta H, decreases as the temperature increases. The equilibrium constant for an endothermic reaction, that is positive delta H, increases as the temperature increases. Temperature changes affect the equilibrium constant and traits of reaction. Production of ammonia according to the reaction N2 gas plus 3H2 gas gives 2NH3 gas, delta H is equals to minus 92.38 kJ per mole, is an exothermic process. According to leach Atelier's principle, raising the temperature shifts the equilibrium to left and decreases the equilibrium concentration of ammonia. In other words, low temperature is favorable for high yield of ammonia, but practically very low temperature slow down the reaction and thus a catalyst is used. Effect of temperature An experiment Effect of temperature on equilibrium can be demonstrated by taking NO2 gas, brown in color, which dimerizes into N2O4 gas that is colorless. 2 NO2 gas gives N2O4 gas, delta H is equals to minus 57.2 kJ per mole. NO2 gas prepared by addition of copper turnings. NO2 gas prepared by addition of copper turnings to concentrated HNO3 is collected in two 5 ml test tubes, ensuring same intensity of color of gas in each tube and stopper sealed with aldehyde. Three 250 ml beakers, 1, 2, and 3, containing freezing mixture, water at room temperature, and hot water, that is 363 Kelvin, respectively, are taken. Figure 7.9. Both the test tubes are placed in beaker 2 for 8 to 10 minutes. After this one is placed in beaker 1 and the other in beaker 3, the effect of temperature on direction of reaction is depicted very well in this experiment. At low temperatures in beaker 1, the forward reaction of formation of N2O4 is preferred, as the reaction is exothermic and thus intensity of brown color due to NO2 decreases, while in beaker 3, High temperature favors the reverse reaction of formation of NO2 gas and thus the brown color intensifies. Effect of temperature can also be seen in an endothermic reaction. At room temperature, the equilibrium mixture is blue due to COCl4 hole to minus. When cooled in a freezing mixture, the color of the mixture turns pink due to coh 6 3 plus. The reaction is coh 2 hole 6 3 plus aqueous plus 4 Cl minus aqueous gives COCl4 whole 2 minus plus 6 H2O liquid. Subtopic 7.8.5 Effect of a catalyst A catalyst increases the rate of the chemical reaction by making available a new low energy pathway for the conversion of reactants to products. It increases the rate of forward and reverse reactions that pass through the same transition state and does not affect equilibrium. Catalyst lowers the activation energy for the forward and reverse reactions by exactly the same amount. Catalyst does not affect the equilibrium composition of a reaction mixture. It does not appear in the balanced chemical equation or in the equilibrium constant expression. Let us consider the formation of NH3 from dinitrogen and dihydrogen, which is highly exothermic reaction and proceeds with decrease in total number of moles formed as compared to the reactants. Equilibrium constant decreases with increase in temperature. At low temperature, rate decreases and it takes long time to reach at equilibrium. Whereas high temperatures give satisfactory rates, 
but poor yields. German chemist Fritz Haber discovered that a catalyst consisting of iron catalyzed the reaction to occur at a satisfactory rate at temperatures where the equilibrium concentration of NH3 is reasonably favorable. Since the number of moles formed in the reaction is less than those of reactants, the yield of NH3 can be improved by increasing the pressure. Optimum conditions of temperature and pressure for the synthesis of NH3 using catalyst are around 500 degrees Celsius and 200 atm. Similarly, in manufacture of sulfuric acid by contact process, 2SO2 gas plus O2 gas gives 2SO3 gas, Kc is equal to 1.7 into 10 raised to power 26. Though the value of K is suggestive of reaction going to completion, but practically the oxidation of SO2 to SO3 is very slow, thus platinum or divanadium pentoxide that is V2O5 is used as a catalyst to increase the rate of the reaction. Note, if a reaction has an exceedingly small K, a catalyst would be of little help. Topic 7.9 Ionic Equilibrium in Solution Under the effect of change of concentration on the direction of equilibrium, you have incidentally come across with the following equilibrium which involves ions. Fe3 plus aqueous plus SCN minus aqueous gives FeSCN2 plus aqueous. There are numerous equilibria that involve ions only. In the following sections, we will study the equilibria involving ions. It is well known that the aqueous solution of sugar does not conduct electricity. However, when common salt, that is sodium chloride, is added to water, it conducts electricity. Also, the conductance of electricity increases with an increase in concentration of common salt. Michael Faraday classified the substances into two categories based on their ability to conduct electricity. One category of substances conduct electricity in their aqueous solutions and are called electrolytes, while the other do not and are thus referred to as non-electrolytes. Faraday further classified electrolytes into strong and weak electrolytes. Strong electrolytes on dissolution in water are ionized almost completely, while the weak electrolytes are only partially dissociated. For example, an aqueous solution of sodium chloride is comprised entirely of sodium ions and chloride ions, while that of acetic acid mainly contains unionized acetic acid molecules and only some acetate ions and hydronium ions. This is because there is almost 100% ionization in case of sodium chloride as compared to less than 5% ionization of acetic acid which is a weak electrolyte. It should be noted that in weak electrolytes, equilibrium is established between ions and the unionized molecules. This type of equilibrium involving ions in aqueous solution is called ionic equilibrium. Acids, bases and salts come under the category of electrolytes and may act as either strong or weak electrolytes. Topic 7.10 Acids, Bases and Salts Acids, bases and salts find widespread occurrence in nature. Hydrochloric acid present in the gastric juice is secreted by the lining of our stomach in a significant amount of 1.2 to 1.5 liters per day and is essential for digestive processes. Acetic acid is known to be the main constituent of vinegar. Lemon and orange juices contain citric acid and ascorbic acids and tartaric acid is found in tamarind paste. As most of the acids say sour, the word acid has been derived from a Latin word acidus meaning sour. Acids are known to turn blue litmus paper into red and liberate dihydrogen on reacting with some metals. Similarly, bases are known to turn red litmus paper blue, taste bitter and feel soapy. A common example of a base is washing soda used for washing purposes. When acids and bases are mixed in the right proportion, they react with each other to give salts. Some commonly known examples of salts are sodium chloride, barium sulfate, sodium nitrate, sodium chloride that is common salt is an important component of our diet and is formed by reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. It exists in solid state as a cluster of positively charged sodium ions and negatively charged chloride ions which are held together due to electrostatic interactions between oppositely charged species. The electrostatic forces between two charges are inversely proportional to dielectric constant of the medium. Water, a universal solvent, possesses a very high dielectric constant of 80. Thus, when sodium chloride is dissolved in water, the electrostatic interactions are reduced by a factor of 80 
and this facilitates the ions to move freely in the solution. Also, they are well separated due to hydration with water molecules. On comparing the ionization of hydrochloric acid with that of acetic acid in water, we find that though both of them are polar covalent molecules, former is completely ionized into its constituent ions while the latter is only partially ionized that is less than 5%. The extent to which ionization occurs depends upon the strength of the bond and the extent of solvation of ions produced. The terms dissociation and ionization have earlier been used with different meaning. Dissociation refers to the process of separation of ions in water already existing as such in the solid state of the solute, as in sodium chloride. On the other hand, ionization corresponds to a process in which a neutral molecule splits into charged ions in the solution. Here, we shall not distinguish between the two and use the two terms interchangeably. Subtropic 7.10.1 Arrhenius concept of acids and bases. According to Arrhenius theory, acids are substances that dissociate in water to give hydrogen ions H plus aqueous and bases are substances that produce hydroxyl ions that is OH minus aqueous. The ionization of an acid HX aqueous can be represented by the following equations. HX aqueous gives H plus aqueous or X minus aqueous or HX aqueous plus H2O liquid gives H3O plus aqueous plus X minus aqueous. A bare proton H plus is very reactive and cannot exist freely in aqueous solutions. Thus, it bonds to the oxygen atom of solvent water molecule to give trigonal pyramidal hydronium ion H3O plus. In this chapter, we shall use H plus aqueous and H3O plus aqueous interchangeably to mean the same that is, a hydrated proton. Similarly, a base molecule like MOH ionizes in aqueous solution according to the equation MOH aqueous gives M plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous. The hydroxyl ion also exists in the hydrated form in the aqueous solution. Arrhenius concept of acid and base, however, suffers from the limitation of being applicable only to aqueous solutions and also does not account for the basicity of substances like ammonia which do not possess a hydroxyl group. Subtopic 7.10.2 the Bronsted lorry acids and bases. The Danish chemist John Bronsted and the English chemist Thomas M. Lorry gave a more general definition of acids and bases. According to Bronsted lorry theory, acid is a substance that is capable of donating a hydrogen ion that is H plus, and bases are substances capable of accepting a hydrogen ion that is H plus. In short, acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors. Consider the example of dissolution of NH3 in H2O represented by the following equation NH3 aqueous plus H2O liquid gives NH4 plus plus OH minus. The basic solution is formed due to the presence of hydroxyl ions. In this reaction, water molecule acts as a proton donor and ammonia molecule acts as a proton acceptor and are thus called lorry bronsted acid and lorry bronsted base. In the reverse reaction, H plus is transferred from NH4 plus to OH minus. In this case, NH4 plus acts as Bronsted acid while OH minus acts as Bronsted base. The acid base pair that differs only by one proton is called a conjugate acid base pair. The acid base pair which differs only by one proton is called a conjugate acid base pair. Therefore, OH minus is called the conjugate base of an acid H2O and NH4 plus is called conjugate acid of the base NH3. If Bronsted acid is a strong acid, then its conjugate base is a weak base and vice versa. It may be noted that conjugate acid has one extra proton and each conjugate base has one less proton. Consider the example of ionization of hydrochloric acid in water. HCl aqueous acts as an acid by donating a proton to H2O molecule which acts as a base. HCl aqueous plus H2O liquid gives H3O plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. It can be seen in the above equation that water acts as a base because it accepts the proton. The species H3O plus is produced when water accepts a proton from HCl. Therefore, Cl minus is a conjugate base of HCl and HCl is the conjugate acid of base Cl minus. Similarly, H2O is a conjugate base of an acid H3O plus and H3O plus is a conjugate acid of base H2O. It is interesting to observe the dual role of water as an acid and a base. In case of reaction with HCl, 
water acts as a base while in case of ammonia it acts as an acid by donating a proton subtopic 7.10.3 lewis acids and bases gn lewis in 1923 defined an acid as a species which accepts electron pair and base which donates an electron pair as far as bases are concerned there is not much difference between bronsted lowry and lewis concepts as the base provides a lone pair in both the cases however in lewis concept many acids do not have proton a typical example is reaction of electron deficient species bf3 with nh3 bf3 does not have a proton but still acts as an acid and reacts with nh3 by accepting its lone pair of electrons the reaction can be represented by bf3 plus nh3 gives bf3 nh3 electron deficient species like alcl3 co3 plus mg2 plus etc can act as lewis acid while species like h2o nh3 oh minus etc which can donate a pair of electrons can act as lewis bases topic 7.11 ionization of acids and bases Arrhenius concept of acids and bases becomes useful in case of ionization of acids and bases as mostly ionizations in chemical and biological systems occur in aqueous medium strong acids like perchloric acid HClO4 hydrochloric acid HCl hydrobromic acid HBr hydroiodic acid HI nitric acid HNO3 and sulfuric acid H2SO4 are termed strong because they are almost completely dissociated into their constituent ions in an aqueous medium thereby acting as proton donors similarly strong bases like lithium hydroxide sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide cesium hydroxide and barium hydroxide are almost completely dissociated into ions in an aqueous medium giving hydroxyl ions oh minus according to arrhenius concept they are strong acids and bases as they are able to completely dissociate and produce h3o plus ions and oh minus ions respectively in the medium alternatively the strength of an acid or base may also be gauged in terms of bronsted lowry concept of acids and bases wherein a strong acid means a good proton donor and a strong base implies a good proton acceptor consider the acid base dissociation equilibrium of a weak acid ha ha aqueous acid plus h2o liquid base gives h3o plus aqueous conjugated acid plus a minus aqueous conjugated base in section 7.10.2 we saw that acid or base dissociation equilibrium is dynamic involving a transfer of proton in forward and reverse directions now the question arises that if the equilibrium is dynamic then with the passage of time which direction is favored what is the driving force behind it in order to answer these questions we shall deal into the issue of comparing the strength of the two acids or bases involved in the dissociation equilibrium consider the two acids ha and h3o plus present in the above mentioned acid dissociation equilibrium we have to see which amongst them is a stronger proton donor whichever exceeds in its tendency of donating a proton over the other shall be termed as a stronger acid and the equilibrium will shift in the direction of weaker acid say if ha is a stronger acid than h3o plus then ha will donate protons and not h3o plus and the solution will mainly contains a minus and h3o plus ions the equilibrium moves in the direction of formation of weaker acid and weaker base respectively because the stronger acid donates a proton to the stronger base it follows that as a strong acid dissociates completely in water the resulting base formed would be very weak that is strong acids have very weak conjugate bases strong acids like perchloric acid hclo4 hydrochloric acid hcl hydrobromic acid hydroiodic acid nitric acid and sulfuric acid will give conjugate base ions clo4 minus cl minus br minus i minus no3 minus and hso4 minus which are much weaker bases than h2o similarly a very strong base would give a very weak conjugate acid on the other hand a weak acid say ha is only partially dissociated in aqueous medium and the solution mainly contains n dissociated ha molecules typical weak acids are nitrous acid hno2 hydrofluoric acid hf and acetic acid ch3coh it should be noted that the weak acids have very strong conjugate bases for example nh2 minus 
O2- and H- are very good proton acceptors and thus much stronger bases than H2O. Certain water-soluble organic compounds like phenolphthalein and bromothymol blue behave as weak acids and exhibit different colors in their acid and conjugate base forms. Such compounds are useful as indicators in acid-base titration and finding out H plus concentrations. Subtopic 7.11.1 The Ionization Constant of Water and Its Ionic Product Some substances like water are unique in their ability of acting both as an acid and a base. We have seen this in case of water in section 7.10.2. In the presence of an acid HA, it accepts a proton and acts as the base while in the presence of a base B-, it acts as an acid by donating a proton. In pure water, one H2 molecule donates proton and acts as an acid and another water molecule accepts a proton and acts as a base at the same time. The following equilibrium exists. H2O liquid as acid plus H2O liquid as base gives H3O plus aqueous conjugated acid plus OH- aqueous conjugated base. The dissociation constant is represented by K is equals to H3O plus into OH- upon H2O. The concentration of water is omitted from the denominator as water is a pure liquid and its concentration remains constant. H2O is incorporated within the equilibrium constant to give a new constant Kw which is called ionic product of water. Kw is equals to H plus into OH minus. The concentration of H plus has been found out experimentally as 10 raised to power minus 7 molars at 298 Kelvin. And as dissociation of water produces equal number of H plus and OH minus, the concentration of hydroxyl ions OH minus is equals to H plus is equal to 10 raised to power minus 7 molar. Thus, the value of Kw at 298 Kelvin is equals to 10 raised to power minus 14 molar square. The value of Kw is temperature dependent as it is an equilibrium constant. The density of pure water is 1000 grams per liter and its molar mass is 18 gram per mole. From this, the molarity of pure water can be given as concentration of H2O is equal to 55.55 molars. Therefore, the ratio of dissociated water to that of undissociated water can be given as 10 raised to power minus 7 upon 55.55 is equal to 2 is to 10 raised to power minus 9. Thus, equilibrium lies mainly towards undissociated water. We can distinguish acidic neutral and basic aqueous solutions by the relative values of the H3O plus and OH minus concentrations. Acidic when H3O plus is greater than OH minus, neutral when H3O plus is equal to OH minus, and basic when H3O plus is less than OH minus. Subtopic 7.11.2 The pH scale Hydronium ion concentration in molarity is more conveniently expressed on a logarithmic scale known as the pH scale. The pH of a solution is defined as the negative logarithm to base 10 of the activity of hydrogen ion. In dilute solutions, that is less than 0.01 molar, activity of hydrogen ion, that is H+, is equal in magnitude to molarity represented by H+. It should be noted that activity has no units and is defined as AH plus is equals to H plus upon mole per liter. From the definition of pH, the following can be written. pH is equals to minus log AH plus is equals to minus log H plus upon mole per liter. Thus, an acidic solution of HCl that is 10 raised to power minus 2 molar will have a pH is equals to 2. Similarly, a basic solution of NaOH having OH- concentration is equal to 10 raised to power minus 4 molar and H3O plus concentration is equal to 10 raised to power minus 10 molar will have a pH is equal to 10. At 25 degrees Celsius, pure water has a concentration of hydrogen ions is equal to 10 raised to power minus 7 molar. Hence, the pH of a pure water is given as pH is equal to minus log 10 raised to power minus 7 is equal to 7. Acidic solutions possess a concentration of hydrogen ions H plus greater than 10 raised to power minus 7 molar, while basic solutions possess a concentration of hydrogen ions H plus less than 10 raised to power minus 7 molars. Thus, we can summarize that acidic solution has pH less than 7, basic solution has pH greater than 7, and neutral solution has pH is equals to 7. Now, again consider the equation 7.28 at 298 Kelvin. 
kW is equal to 10 raised to power minus 14, taking negative logarithm on both sides of equation, we obtain minus log k is equal to minus log 10 raised to power minus 14, pKW is equal to pH plus pOH is equal to 14. Note that although kW may change with temperature, the variations in pH with temperature are so small that we often ignore it. PKW is very important quantity for aqueous solutions and controls the relative concentrations of hydrogen and hydroxyl ions as their product is a constant. It should be noted that, as the pH scale is logarithmic, a change in pH by just one unit also means change in H plus by a factor of 10. Similarly, when the hydrogen ion concentration H plus changes by a factor of 100, the value of pH changes by 2 units. Now you can realize why the change in pH with temperature is often ignored. Measurement of pH of a solution is very essential as its value should be known when dealing with biological and cosmetic applications. The pH of a solution can be found roughly with the help of pH paper that has different color in solutions of different pH. Nowadays, pH paper is available with 4 strips on it. The different strips have different colors, figure 7.11, at the same pH. The pH in the range of 1 to 14 can be determined with an accuracy of 0.5 using pH paper. For greater accuracy, pH meters are used. pH meter is a device that measures the pH-dependent electrical potential of the test solution within 0.001 precision. pH meters of the size of a writing pen are now available in the market. The pH of some very common substances are given in Table 7.5. Subtopic 7.11.3 Ionization Constants of Weak Acids Consider a weak acid HX that is partially ionized in the aqueous solution. The equilibrium can be expressed by HX aqueous plus H2O liquid gives H3O plus aqueous plus X minus aqueous. Let alpha be the extent of ionization change that is M minus C alpha plus C alpha plus C alpha. Equilibrium concentration M is equals to C minus C alpha is equals to C alpha C alpha. Here C is equals to initial concentration of the undissociated acid. Here C is equals to initial concentration of the undissociated acid HX at time T is equals to zero, alpha is equals to extent up to which HX is ionized into ions. Using these notations, we can derive the equilibrium constant for the above discussed acid dissociation equilibrium. Ka is equals to C square alpha square upon C into 1 minus alpha is equals to C alpha square upon 1 minus alpha. Ka is called the dissociation or ionization constant of acid HX. It can be represented alternatively in terms of molar concentration as follows. Ka is equals to concentration of H plus into X minus upon HX. At a given temperature T, Ka is the measure of the strength of the acid HX that is larger the value of Ka, the stronger is the acid. Ka is a dimensionless quantity with the understanding that the standard state concentration of all the species is one molar. The values of the ionization constants of some selected weak acids are given in table 7.6. The pH scale for the hydrogen ion concentration has been so useful that besides pKa, it has been extended to other species and quantities. Knowing the ionization constant Ka of an acid and its initial concentration C, it is possible to calculate the equilibrium concentration of all species and also the degree of ionization of the acid and the pH of the solution. A general stepwise approach can be adopted to evaluate the pH of the weak electrolyte as follows. Step 1. The species present before dissociation are identified as bronsted lorry acids or bases. Step 2. Balanced equations for all possible reactions, that is with the species acting both as acid as well as base, are written. Step 3. The reaction with the higher Ka is identified as the primary reaction, whereas the other is subsidiary reaction. Step 4. And list in a tabular form the following values for each of the species in the primary reaction. A. Initial concentration C. B. Change in concentration on proceeding to equilibrium in terms of alpha, degree of ionization. C. Equilibrium concentration. Step 5. Substitute equilibrium concentrations into equilibrium constant equation for principal reaction and solve for alpha. Step 6. Calculate the concentration of a species in principal reaction. Step 7. Calculate pH is equals to minus log H3O plus. 
सब टॉपिक सेवन पॉइंट इलेवन पॉइंट फोर आयनाइजेशन ऑफ वीक बेसिस द आयनाइजेशन ऑफ बेस एम ओ एच कैन बी रिप्रेजेंटेड बाई इक्वेशन एम ओ एच एक्वस गिव एम प्लस एक्वस प्लस ओ एच माइनस एक्वस इन अ वीक बेस देर इज पार्शल आयनाइजेशन ऑफ एम ओ एच इन टू एम प्लस एंड ओ एच माइनस द केस इज सिमिलर टू दैट ऑफ एसिड डिसोसिएशन इक्लेब्रियम द इक्लेब्रियम कॉन्स्टेंट फॉर बेस आयनाइजेशन इज कॉल्ड बेस आयनाइजेशन कॉन्स्टेंट एंड इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाई के बी इट कैन बी एक्सप्रेस इन टर्म्स ऑफ कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इन मोलैरिटी ऑफ वेरियस स्पीशीज इन इक्लेब्रियम बाई द फॉलोइंग इक्वेशन के बी इज इक्वल्स टू एम प्लस इन टू ओ एच माइनस अपॉन एम ओ एच और ऑल्टरनेटिवली के बी इज इक्वल्स टू सी एल्फा स्क्वायर अपॉन वन माइनस एल्फा वेयर एल्फा इज इक्वल्स टू डिग्री ऑफ आयनाइजेशन ऑफ बेस दर इज द एक्सेंट टू विच द बेस आयनाइजेज द वैल्यूज ऑफ द आयनाइजेशन कॉन्स्टेंट्स ऑफ सम सेलेक्टेड वीक बेसिस के बी आर गिवन इन टेबल सेवन पॉइंट सेवन मैनी ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड लाइक अमाइंस आर वीक बेसिस अमाइंस आर डेरीवेटिव ऑफ अमोनिया इन विच वन और मोर हाइड्रोजन एटम्स आर रिप्लेस बाई अनदर ग्रोप फॉर एग्जाम्पल मिथाइल अमीन कोडीन क्वीनिन एंड निकोटीन ऑल बिहेव एज वेरी वीक बेसिस ड्यू टू देयर वेरी स्मॉल के बी अमोनिया प्रोड्यूस ओ एच इन एक्व सोल्यूशन एन एच थ्री एक्वस प्लस एच टू लिक्विड गेस एन एच फोर प्लस एक्वस प्लस ओ एच माइनस एक्वस The pH scale for that hydrogen ion concentration has been extended to get pKb is equals to minus log Kb. Subtopic 7.11.5 Relation between Ka and Kb. As seen earlier in this chapter, Ka and Kb represent the strength of an acid and a base respectively. In case of a conjugate acid base pair, they are related in a simple manner so that if one is known, the other can be deduced. considering the example of nh4+ and nh3 we see nh4+ aqueous plus h2o liquid gives h3o+ aqueous plus nh3 aqueous kw is equals to h3o+ concentration into oh- concentration is equals to 10 raised to power minus 14 molar where ka represents the strength of nh4+ as an acid and kb represents the strength of nh3 as a base It can be seen from the net reaction that the equilibrium constant is equal to the product of equilibrium constants Ka and Kb for the reactions added. Thus, Ka into Kb is equals to Kw. This can be extended to make a generalization. The equilibrium constant for a net reaction obtained after adding two or more reactions equals the product of the equilibrium constants for individual reactions. Similarly, in case of a conjugate acid-base pair. Ka into Kb is equal to Kw. Knowing one, the other can be obtained. It should be noted that a strong acid will have a weak conjugate base, and vice versa. Alternatively, the above expression Kw is equal to Ka into Kb can also be obtained by considering the base dissociation equilibrium reaction. B aqueous plus H2O liquid gives BH4 plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous. Kb is equal to BH plus into OH minus upon B. As the concentration of water remains constant, it has been omitted from the denominator and incorporated within the dissociation constant. Then multiplying and dividing the above expression by H plus, we get Kb is equals to Kw upon Ka, or Ka into Kb is equals to Kw. It may be noted that if we take negative logarithm of both sides of the equation. then pk values of the conjugate acid and base are related to each other by the equation pka plus pkb is equals to pkw is equals to 14 at 298 kelvin sub topic 7.11.6 di and poly basic acids and di and poly acidic bases some of the acids like oxalic acid sulfuric acid and phosphoric acids have more than one ionizable proton per molecule of the acid Such acids are known as polybasic or polyprotic acids. The ionization reactions for example for a dibasic acid H2X are represented by the equations H2X gives H+ plus plus HX- minus. HX- minus gives H+ plus plus X2- minus aqueous and the corresponding equilibrium constants are given below. Ka1 is equals to H+ plus into HX- minus upon H2X and Ka2 is equals to H plus into X two minus upon H X minus. Here, K A one and K A two are called the first and second ionization constants respectively of the acid H two X. Similarly, for tri-basic acids like H three P O four, we have three ionization constants. 
it can be seen that higher order ionization constants Ka2, Ka3 are smaller than the lower order ionization constant Ka1 of a polyprotic acid. The reason for this is that it is more difficult to remove a positively charged proton from a negative ion due to electrostatic forces. This can be seen in the case of removing a proton from the uncharged H2CO3 as compared from a negatively charged HCO3-. Similarly, it is more difficult to remove a proton from a doubly charged HPO42- anion as compared to H2PO4- anion. Polyprotic acid solutions contain a mixture of acids like H2A, HA- and A2-. In case of diprotic acid, H2A being a strong acid, the primary reaction involves the dissociation of H2A and H3O plus in the solution comes mainly from the first dissociation step. Subtopic 7.11.7 .7, Factors Affecting Acid Strength Having discussed quantitatively the strength of acids and bases, we come to a stage where we can calculate the pH of a given acid solution, but the curiosity rises about why should some acids be stronger than others. What factors are responsible for making them stronger? The answer lies in its being a complex phenomenon. But broadly speaking, we can say that the extent of dissociation of an acid depends on the strength and polarity of the HA bond. In general, when strength of HA bond decreases, that is the energy required to break the bond decreases, HA becomes a stronger acid. Also, when the HA bond becomes more polar, that is the electronegativity difference between the atoms H and A increases and there is marked charge separation, cleavage of the bond becomes easier, thereby increasing the acidity. But it should be noted that, while comparing elements in the same group of the periodic table, HA bond strength is a more important factor in determining acidity than its polar nature. As the size of A increases down the group, HA bond strength decreases and so the acid strength increases. For example, HF is less than HCl, HCl is less than HBr and HBr is less than HI. So acid strength increases from HF to HI and size also increases from HF to HI. Similarly, H2S is a stronger acid than H2O. But when we discuss elements in the same row of the periodic table, HA bond polarity becomes the deciding factor for determining the acid strength. As the electronegativity of A increases, the strength of the acid also increases. For example, HF greater than H2O, greater than NH3, greater than CH4. Subtopic 7.11.8 common ion effect in the ionization of acids and bases. Consider an example of acidic acid dissociation equilibrium represented as CH3COOH aqueous gives H plus aqueous plus CH3COO minus aqueous or HAC aqueous gives H plus aqueous plus AC minus aqueous Ka is equals to concentration of H plus into AC minus upon HAC. Addition of acetate ions to an acidic acid solution results in decreasing the concentration of hydrogen ions H+. Also, if H+, ions are added from an external source, then the equilibrium moves in the direction of undissociated acidic acid, that is, in a direction of reducing the concentration of hydrogen ions. This phenomenon is an example of common ion effect. It can be defined as shift in equilibrium on adding a substance that provides more of an ionic species already present in the dissociation equilibrium. Thus, we can say that common ion effect is a phenomenon based on the leach atelier's principle discussed in section 7.8. In order to evaluate the pH of the solution resulting on addition of 0.05 molar acetate ion to 0.05 molar acetic acid solution, we shall consider the acetic acid dissociation equilibrium once again. Ka is equals to H plus concentration into AC minus upon HAC is equals to 0.05 plus x into x upon 0.05 minus x. As k is a small for very weak acid, x is very less than 0.05, hence 0.05 plus x can be taken as 0.05. Thus, 1.8 into 10 raised to power minus 5 is equals to x into 0.05 upon 0.05 is equals to x. H plus is equals to 1.8 into 10 raised to power minus 5 molar. pH is equals to minus log of 1.8 into 10 raised to power minus 5 is equals to 4.74. Subtopic 7.11.9 
hydrolysis of salts and the pH of their solutions. Salts formed by the reactions between acids and bases in definite proportions undergo ionization in water. The cations or anions formed on ionization of salts either exist as hydrated ions in aqueous solution or interact with water to reform corresponding acids or bases depending upon the nature of salts. The later process of interaction between water and cations or anions of both of salts is called hydrolysis. The pH of the solution gets affected by this interaction. The cations, example Na+, K+, Ca2+, etc. of strong bases and anions, example Cl-, Br-, NO3-, ClO4-, etc. of strong acids simply get hydrated but do not hydrolyze and therefore the solutions of salts formed from strong acids and bases are neutral, that is, their pH is 7. However, the other category of salts do undergo hydrolysis. We now consider the hydrolysis of the salts of the following types. First, salts of weak acid and strong base. Example, CH3COONA. Second, salts of strong acid and weak base. Example, NH4Cl. And third, salts of weak acid and weak base. Example, CH3COONH4. In the first case, CH3COONA being a salt of weak acid, CH3COOH and strong base, NaOH, gets completely ionized in aqueous solution. Acetate ion thus formed undergoes hydrolysis in water to give acetic acid and OH- ions. Acetic acid being a weak acid, Ka is equal to 1.8 into 10 raised to power minus 5 remains mainly unionized in solution. This results in increase of OH- ion concentration in solution making it alkaline. The pH of such a solution is more than 7. Similarly, NH4Cl form from weak base, NH4OH and strong acid HCl in water dissociates completely. Ammonium ions undergo hydrolysis with water to form NH4OH and H plus ions. Ammonium hydroxide is a weak base, Kb is equal to 1.77 into 10 raised to power minus 5 and therefore remains almost unionized in solution. This results in increased of H plus ion concentration in solution, making the solution acidic. Thus, the pH of NH4Cl solution in water is less than 7. Consider the hydrolysis of CH3COONH4 salt formed from weak acid and weak base. The ions formed undergo hydrolysis as follow. CH3COOH and NH4OH also remain into partially dissociated form. Without going into detailed calculation, it can be said that degree of hydrolysis is independent of concentration of solution and pH of such solutions is determined by their pK values. pH is equal to 7 plus half into pKa minus pKb. The pH of solution can be greater than 7 if the difference is positive and it will be less than 7 if the difference is negative. Topic 7.12 Buffer Solutions Many body fluids, example blood or urine, have definite pH and any deviation in their pH indicates malfunctioning of the body. The control of pH is also very important in many chemical and biochemical processes. Many medical and cosmetic formulations require that these be kept and administered at a particular pH. The solutions which resist change in pH on dilution or with the addition of small amounts of acid or alkali are called buffer solutions. Buffer solutions of known pH can be prepared from the knowledge of pKa of the acid or pKb of base and by controlling the ratio of the salt and acid or salt and base. A mixture of acidic acid and sodium acetate acts as buffer solution around pH 4.75 and a mixture of ammonium chloride and ammonium hydroxide acts as a buffer around pH 9.25. You will learn more about buffer solutions in higher classes. Topic 7.13 Solubility Equilibria of Sparingly Soluble Salts We have already known that the solubility of ionic solids in water varies a great deal. Some of these like calcium chloride are so soluble that they are hygroscopic in nature and even absorb water vapor from atmosphere. Others such as lithium fluoride have so little solubility that they are commonly termed as insoluble. The solubility depends on a number of factors important amongst which are the lattice enthalpy of the salt and the solvation enthalpy of the ions in a solution. 
for a salt to dissolve in a solvent, the strong forces of attraction between its ions, that is lattice enthalpy, must be overcome by the ion-solvent interactions. The solvation enthalpy of ions is referred to in terms of solvation, which is always negative. That is, energy is released in the process of solvation. The amount of solvation enthalpy depends upon the nature of the solvent. In case of a non-polar solvent, solvation enthalpy is small and hence not sufficient to overcome lattice enthalpy of the salt. Consequently, the salt does not dissolve in non-polar solvent. As a general rule, for a salt to be able to dissolve in a particular solvent, its solvation enthalpy must be greater than its lattice enthalpy, so that the latter may be overcome by former. Each salt has its own characteristic solubility, which depends upon temperature. We classify salts on the basis of their solubility in the following three categories. Soluble, if solubility is greater than 0.1 molar. Slightly soluble, if solubility is between 0.01 molar and 0.1 molar. And sparingly soluble, if solubility is less than 0.01 molar. We shall now consider the equilibrium between the sparingly soluble ionic salt and its saturated aqueous solution. Subtopic 7.13.1 solubility product constant. Let us now have a solid like barium sulphate in contact with its saturated aqueous solution. The equilibrium between undissolved solid and the ions in a saturated solution can be represented by the equation BaSO4 solid, saturated solution in water, gives Ba2 plus aqueous plus SO4 2 minus aqueous. The equilibrium constant is given by the equation K is equals to Ba2 plus into SO4 2 minus upon BaSO4. For a pure solid substance, the concentration remains constant and we can write Ksp is equals to K into BaSO4 is equals to Ba2 plus into SO4 2 minus. We call Ksp the solubility product constant or simply solubility product. The experimental value of Ksp in above equation at 298 Kelvin is 1.1 into 10 raised to power minus 10. This means that for a solid barium sulphate in equilibrium with its saturated solution, the product of the concentrations of barium and sulphate ions is equal to its solubility product constant. The concentrations of the two ions will be equal to the molar solubility of the barium sulphate. If molar solubility is S, then 1.1 into 10 raised to power minus 10 is equals to S square or S is equals to 1.05 into 10 raised to power minus 5. Thus, molar solubility of barium sulphate will be equal to 1.05 into 10 raised to power minus 5 mole per liter. A salt may give on dissociation two or more than two anions and cations carrying different charges. For example, consider a salt like zirconium phosphate of molecular formula ZR4 plus whole thrice PO4 3 minus whole 4. It dissociates into three zirconium cations of charge plus 4 and four phosphate anions of charge minus 3. If the molar solubility of zirconium phosphate is S, then it can be seen from the stoichiometry of the compound that ZR4 plus is equal to 3S and PO4 3 minus is equal to 4S and KSP is equal to 3S whole cube into 4S raised to power 4 is equal to 6912 into S raised to power 7. The term KSP in equation is given by QSP, section 7.6.2, when the concentration of one or more species is not the concentration under equilibrium. Obviously, under equilibrium conditions, KSP is equal to QSP, but otherwise, it gives the direction of the processes of precipitation or dissolution. The solubility product constants of a number of common salts at 298 Kelvin are given in table 7.9. Subtopic 7.13.2 Common Ion Effect on Solubility of Ionic Salts It is expected from Lee Chatelier's principle that if we increase the concentration of any one of the ions, it should combine with the ion of its opposite charge and some of the salt will be precipitated till once again Ksp is equal to Qsp. Similarly, if the concentration of one of the ions is decreased, more salt will dissolve to increase the concentration of both the ions till once again Ksp is equal to Qsp. This is applicable even to soluble salts like sodium chloride except that due to higher concentration of the ions, we use their activities instead of their molarities in the expression for Qsp. Thus, if we take a saturated solution of sodium chloride and pass HCl gas through it, 
then sodium chloride is precipitated due to increased concentration that is activity of chloride ion available from the dissociation of HCl. Sodium chloride thus obtained is of very high purity and we can get rid of impurities like sodium and magnesium sulfates. The common ion effect is also used for almost complete precipitation of a particular ion as its sparingly soluble salt with very low value of solubility product for gravimetric estimation. Thus, we can precipitate silver ion as silver chloride, ferric ion as its hydroxide or hydrated ferric oxide and barium ion as its sulfate for quantitative estimations. The solubility of salts of weak acids like phosphates increases at lower pH. This is because at lower pH, the concentration of the anion decreases due to its protonation. This in turn decreases the solubility of the salt so that Ksp is equals to Qsp. We have to satisfy two equilibria simultaneously. That is, Ksp is equals to concentration of M plus into X minus, Hx aqueous gives H plus aqueous plus X minus aqueous, Ka is equals to H plus into X minus upon Hx, taking inverse of both sides and adding one we get Hx plus H minus upon X minus is equals to H plus plus Ka upon Ka. Now again taking inverse, we get X minus upon X minus plus Hx is equals to F is equals to Ka upon Ka plus H plus. And it can be seen that F decreases as pH decreases. If S is the solubility of the salt, if S is the solubility of the salt at a given pH, then Ksp is equals to S into Fs is equals to S square into Ka upon Ka plus H plus and S is equals to Ksp into H plus plus Ka upon Ka whole raised to power 1 by 2. Thus, solubility S increases with increase in H plus or decrease in pH. Summary of Chapter 7 Equilibrium When the number of molecules leaving the liquid to vapor equals the number of molecules returning to the liquid from vapor, equilibrium is said to be attained and is dynamic in nature. Equilibrium can be established for both physical and chemical processes and at this stage, rate of forward and reverse reactions are equal. Equilibrium constant Kc is expressed as the concentration of products divided by reactants, each term raised to stoichiometric coefficient for reaction small a capital A plus a small b capital B gives small c capital C plus a small d capital D, Kc is equals to capital C raised to power small c, similarly d raised to power d upon a raised to power a into b raised to power b. Equilibrium constant has constant value at a fixed temperature and at this stage, all the macroscopic properties such as concentration, pressure, etc. become constant. For a gaseous reaction, equilibrium constant is expressed as Kp and is written by replacing concentration terms by partial pressures in Kc expression. The direction of reaction can be predicted by the reaction quotient Qc which is equal to Kc at equilibrium. Lee Chatelier's principle states that the change in any factor such as temperature, pressure, concentration, etc will cause the equilibrium to shift in such a direction so as to reduce or counteract the effect of the change. It can be used to study the effect of various factors such as temperature, concentration, pressure, catalyst and inert gas on the direction of equilibrium and to control the yield of products by controlling these factors. Catalyst does not affect the equilibrium composition of a reaction mixture but increases the rate of chemical reaction by making available a new lower energy pathway for conversion of reactants to products and vice versa. All substances that conduct electricity in aqueous solution are called electrolytes. Acids, bases and salts are electrolytes and the conduction of electricity by their aqueous solutions is due to anions and cations produced by the dissociation or ionization of electrolytes in aqueous solution. The strong electrolytes are completely dissociated in weak electrolytes, there is equilibrium between the ions and the unionized electrolyte molecules. According to Arrhenius, acids give hydrogen ions while bases produce hydroxyl ions in their aqueous solution. bronsted lowry on the other hand, defined an acid as a proton donor and a base as a proton acceptor. When a bronsted lowry acid reacts with a base, it produces its conjugate base and a conjugate acid 
corresponding to the base with which it reacts. Thus, a conjugate pair of acid base differs only by one proton. Lewis further generalized the definition of an acid as an electron pair acceptor and a base as an electron pair donor. The expressions for ionization are equilibrium constants of weak acids that is Ka and weak bases Kb are developed using Arrhenius definition. The degree of ionization and its dependence on concentration and common ion are discussed. The pH scale that is pH is equals to minus log H plus for the hydrogen ion concentration has been introduced and extended to other quantities like pOH and pKa or pKb and pKw. The ionization of water has been considered and we note that the equation pH plus pOH is equals to pKa is always satisfied. The salts of a strong acid and weak base, weak acid and strong base and weak acid and weak base undergo hydrolysis in aqueous solution. The definition of buffer solutions and their importance are discussed briefly. The solubility equilibrium of a sparingly soluble salts is discussed and the equilibrium constant is introduced as solubility product constant that is KSP. Its relationship with solubility of the salt is established. The conditions of precipitation of the salt from their solutions or their dissolution in water are worked out. The role of common ion and the solubility of sparingly soluble salts is also discussed. Thank you.